Hello and welcome to the Lonely Knitter Book Club. If you are new over here and you have stumbled into this video, it may be worth you going back to the last episode of the Lonely Knitter podcast where I chat about yarn and crafty things in my life. This isn't a typical episode. This is the book club, which is something else that I run. Um, all are welcome here. There is no sign-ups that you must do to be part of it. But if you want to read the book that we're about to discuss, if you've watched my last episode of my podcast, I'm recording this directly after it. And there is still a fly in this room. So if you see me flap, that is why. <laughs> um, anyway, <laughs> if you would like to join in with the book that we have just finished reading or finished reading in the last few months because I dropped the ball. Um, we have been reading Dumplin' by Julie Murphy. And if you fancy reading it, stop the video here go and read it and then come back to this video and we can have a little bit of a chat about what we felt about the book and all that. Um, this is not a serious scary book club where you know this is a fun we read a book we chat about it did we like it did we not like it what did we like what did we not like all right let's move on to the next book it's a little chat just so that we can have a little sense of we're a group and we're reading some books in 2022 <laughs> so yeah this isn't this isn't meant to be a high pressure thing at all and um, it was just a way to get me to actually read some books this year because before I had children I used to read books. I used to read more books than chocolate bars that I ate, and that is a big deal. That is a big deal. Like I would literally, I'd be read, I'd be staying up. My husband at the time would have been like, my, my husband at the time sounds like it was my previous husband that I used to. Have. It's the same husband, but he wasn't my husband back then. So back then, this same man that I still live with now. <laughs> used to be like what are you staying up for could you just go to sleep and i'm like no no i can't i'm reading <laughs> there's two there's definitely two flies i keep seeing two anyway sorry so i'm gonna have a chat about dumpling by julie murphy and then when i have finished chatting about it then i will have a quick chat about the next book club book and i will show you the yarn that i have dyed to go with it the yarn, buying the yarn is not a compulsory thing to be part of book club. It is something that I would love if you fancy it. That would be amazing. Love to see some book club projects popping up um, or some stash going in, going out that is, uh, that is making you happy and giving you a little reminder, a little memento of some of the books that you managed to get through in 2022. But this is the sort of club that you can join in just by reading the book. You can go to the library, get the book, read it, join in and have a chat in the comments below and you don't have to worry or feel pressured that you have to spend money. This is something that everyone can join in on. So, uh, so yeah, so Dumplin', I'm, I've got notes and everything. If you'd given me this book in high school, I would have been very happy. I, what fat girl can't relate to a lot of the emotions and feelings that Willow Dean Dixon has? That's it, basically. What a fat girl can't. Um, the, the relationship with her mum really struck a chord. Um, my relationship with my mum now is, you know, good. She's the most amazing grandma. She's one of the most wonderful people. She's someone I can barely go a day without talking to. And, um, yeah, she's, yeah. But as a teenager... Mainly I was a shit, <laughs> but, um, you know, that, that, that teenage relationship with her mum really struck a chord for me. Yeah, it's a book I wish I'd had in high school, just to feel a little bit less alone and a little bit like girls like me could be empowered. Um, I know she doesn't feel like that a lot in the book, but a lot of the things that she does say are things that I would never have even... Um, yeah, the, the quote, like that whole, um, all my life I've had a body worth commenting on and if living in my skin has taught me anything, it's that if it's not your body, it's not yours to comment on. I would have loved to have had that sentence in my mouth half of the times that I was being bullied about my weight in high school. 
I would have loved to have just spat that out. I'd have loved to have any of the brilliant lines in this book. I'd have loved that. But I didn't read that book. <laughs> I The first thing, I saw this movie first. and um, It was a little while ago. And I wanted then to read the book. And I'm glad I did. Because I think it would have always been on my list if I hadn't. But I did enjoy it. It was enjoyable. There were a few times I felt I was literally dragging myself along. Just a few times I was like, come on, you've got to finish this. It's a book club book. So there were a few times when I wasn't gripped. And there was this little voice in my head that was like, is it really body positive? Because it goes, fly, go away, fly. It goes on about being body positive. Uh, there's so many reviews online about being body, po body positive, about um you know a, a fat girl doing something you know for herself and and standing up to the norm and all this but actually there's you know words like this that I wrote one sentence down I'm fat but Millie's the type of fat that requires elastic waist pants because they don't make pants with buttons and zippers in her size and I read that and I thought body positive or bitchy teenager shaming another girl you know um oh, oh it made me feel awkward that that line a few of the things in there um and then my devil's advocate voice which always pops up but always always comes in for a little chat when but isn't that how teenage girls brains work isn't that how my brain probably would have worked <laughs> and yeah it probably is. It's probably realistic. It's probably what what would have been said. <laughs> Haven't I? Yeah, Willow Dean's inner monologue feels a bit of a hypocrite. The fly. Where is the fly? <laughs> yeah, Willow Dean's inner monologue feels a bit of a hypocrite. Quite a bit of the time feels a bit of a. Spoiled brat cow sometimes. <laughs> I, yeah, I hugely related to her. But it didn't mean I have to like her. I did, but but big chunks of the book I was like. And um, I see those similarities in my relationship with myself. <laughs> so yeah, there was parts of me that felt like Willa Dean's inner monologue was really hypocritical. That it just didn't feel like nice. That it felt like some of her decisions. I was like, oh, come on. But haven't I felt that way a million times? Haven't I thought the things about myself that she thinks? Um, isn't it just reality? I I don't know. Um, I that so there's one phrase. The phrase I'm sure everyone knows remembers this from the book. Do you have a body? Put a swimsuit on it. You know. That whole if you have a swim, getting a swimsuit body, do you have a body put some sweet on it yes that but that one phrase doesn't instantly mean that the whole book is going to be body positive to say that phrase doesn't then give you a blank canvas to sit there and write horrible things or things that can shame people I don't know. so yeah i i enjoyed it there were a few slow moments for me there were a few things i found frustrating um i do think on the whole it a good confidence booster. I wish wish I'd read it when I was younger and really, really struggling, especially in school. Um, I didn't. I didn't have a lot of love for the best friend for Ellen. Um, couldn't really connect there. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, so I did enjoy it. I did. I like the line. I wrote. I wrote it down. I think maybe it's the things we don't want to talk about that are the things people most want to hear. And a little bit of me was reading the book and thinking, this book is basically just screaming out all those fat girl things that we're looking at the drama and making ourselves feel better about ourselves because it's not as bad as that. Or I don't know. I don't know. That I'm not sure I enjoyed it basically I thought it was all right I thought it was a good book um a good read but it's not something I'll go back to and 
I'm not sure I would have it on my I've got to recommend this list. Um, I, I do think I am being quite critical because of the thing, certain things that were said and certain opinions. Um, but I think that that probably is realistic. And the way she thinks, the things that annoyed me about her that she thought probably are how I would think. So, yeah, it's a funny one. I have a love-hate relationship here. <laughs> it's hard because I think especially when you're very emotionally tied into the whole teenage fat girl life, um, can actually be a little bit sort of triggering, a little bit sort of because yes we have quite a lot of us been there and hated every moment of it and you know so yeah not sure what i thought about that one what do you think put it below that was my absolutely awful gobbledygook thoughts about dumpling by julie murphy <laughs> <laughs> anyway I picked the next book and because we got a little bit higgledy piggledy and off track because East Anglia Yarn Festival got bigger than I ever thought it could and just wiped me out for months on end um this book is going to go from July from now until the end of August and then we'll have another book for the next two months and another book for the last two months it means we'll get through five this year instead of the six I had hoped for but I'll take five it's more than I read the last year <laughs> so the next book that we are reading is The Missing Letters of Mrs. Bright by Beth Miller. Remember, if you want to grab it on Kindle like I have or grab a paper copy online, fair enough. But if you want to use your library, your local libraries are desperate for some support. Every time someone uses a local library, it shows that they are still needed and it shows that they should still get funding and they will be very grateful. So this doesn't have to cost you anything. But I'm going to be reading The Missing Letters of Mrs. Bright by Beth Miller. And I'm going to read you out the little blurb, blurb, blurb that is on Goodreads. I'm, I've picked them one off Goodreads because, to be honest, the rest of them online were really partial. And they hadn't got the whole lot. And then I was like, I'm just going to read this one. I'm going to read it. I'm going to read it. So I'm going to read it out. If you don't want any spoilers, end here. Go and grab the book. I will show you the yarn before I do the little, the little talky bit so that you can see it i have this on dk and on sock last month i didn't get any takers for the dk which is totally fine but it was it was requested in the first month so if nobody goes for it this month i won't bother with it next month um or did i have anyone buy it last month i might have actually sold some in the end last month i might be last uh, club i might be off my rocker because it has been a few months so we'll see how this goes if nobody fancies dk this month i might just put a hold on it for next month and just dye it if anybody wants it but this is the color combo that i have dyed up for the missing letters of mrs bright here it is on the dk and you can see the speckles a little bit easier it's blowing out just a little that's pretty accurate back there so we have like a goldy yellow with speckles in there too and then those same speckles are on this light lilac. So that's the DK set. So you get 50 grams of each. Here's the sock set. And you can see the little speckles in there. These are both 75, 25, 75% uh, 75 superwash merino, 25% nylon, whether you get the DK or the sock. The sock is not my platinum base. It is the Krypton base. It is the base that I am using for all of my sock yarn now but this is the older dk base not the new 100 percent merino base that i'm running on now so i have both of these they will be really blowing out but it's the light they will be photographed and on the website now and you'll be able to see a little better their colors in the daylight anyway so i'm just going to read out the little the little bit on goodreads about this book from the back of the book and a little synopsis so if you don't fancy hearing anything about it i'll leave you here goodbye um but this is what it says you've met mrs bright she's that nice woman who lives three doors down and always smiles at you in the mornings she's planning her 30th wedding anniversary with her husband she wants to travel read endless books and take beautiful pictures she's been waiting for this forever for the past 29 years, Kay Bright's days have had a familiar rhythm. 
She works in her husband's stationery shop. Amazing job. Cooks for her family, tries to remember to practice yoga, and every other month she writes to her best friend, Ursula, and Ursula replies. Kay has set her calendar by their letters. Her heart lifts when the blue airmail envelope addressed in Ursula's slanting handwriting falls gently onto the mat. Ursula is the only one who knows Kay's deepest secret, something that happened decades ago that could tear Kay's life apart today. Ursula has always been the person Kay relies on. Knowing she will hear from Ursula is like being sure the sun will rise tomorrow. And now Ursula hasn't, has stopped writing. Three missing letters doesn't sound like a lot, but Kay gets out her shoebox of notes from her best friend in case there's something she's overlooked. Ursula seems fine, but the further back she goes, the more Kay begins to question every choice she has made in her life, which might be why at 10 o'clock one morning, Kay walks out of her yellow front door with just a rucksack, leaving her wedding ring on the table. Ooh. <laughs> so I've got it on my Kindle. I'm a very lucky bug. Uh, it was my birthday last month. I was 32. Well, it wasn't a lockdown lockdown birthday, which was nice. Um, 31, I was in hospital for three and a half weeks. I got sepsis and it was hideous. Um, I was very lucky. They caught it very early. I was incredibly lucky and it did not have massive lasting complications. Um, and the year before that, I was locked down. So now I'm 32 and for my birthday, my lovely husband bought me a backlit Kindle. I had a Kindle, it was very old, had a big scratch in the middle of the screen and it wasn't backlit. So at night I would be, I'd have like my phone torch on and my dark light. Have you guys got a dark light? Anyone got a dark light? I don't know what it's really called, but we call it a dark light. Um, Because my husband is ripping the mick out of me, but it is basically like a wire, like a neck light, a neck light, two little lights on a, on a tubey, Thing goes around your neck and you can position them so I'd always have that on or my phone light on to read at night when he falls asleep and I just want to read a little bit before I fell asleep so for my birthday him and the kids bought me a backlit kindle not a big fancy one just the cheaper one but but backlit so it means that I can read at night and not have to have an extra light on and that is really really nice um so I have got that on my kindle and I am going to be reading it but as I said if you can't buy the book don't let that be a barrier for you. Go to your local library if you're able to and grab one from there. I am going to go because I'm exhausted. I'm going to go and read my book for a couple of minutes before bed. <laughs> Thank you, as always, for making me so much less of a lonely knitter.